when uh, Vladimir uh, Zelensky was uh, here on the East Coast, uh, when he spoke to the General Assembly, <clears throat> uh, two thirds of the UN, two thirds of the seats were empty. Yeah, at least. Uh, af after he spoke right there on the East River, just where the UN uh, is located, uh, President Duda of Poland compared uh, Ukraine to a, a drowning swimmer, so dangerous that lifeguards wouldn't save him because he might pull the lifeguards down. Uh, a pretty, pretty lurid uh, analogy. Right. Uh, when President Zelensky went to D.C., begged Kevin McCarthy to convene a joint session of Congress and let him speak. Speaker McCarthy said, no, you can only speak to us in private, which he did to the House uh, and to the Senate. And then uh, Joe Biden apparently whispered into his ear, you know, we're, we're going to give you these attackums, these longer range uh, artillery. A bad right. week for him, I think, by any objective standard. And yet, let me play for you a clip of him yesterday speaking to the Ukrainian people when he returned from the United States. There is a historic decision by the United States to jointly produce weapons and defense systems, in particular, air defense. This is something that was an absolute fantasy until recently, but it will become a reality. We will make it a reality. I held very important meetings in Washington in Congress, both parties, both houses, and we specifically requested a format of meetings and communication in Congress that would allow for the most detailed conversation. This resulted in more trust, and I heard that support for Ukraine will persist. I heard that support for Ukraine will persist. He, he must have heard it when Chuck Schumer bowed and said, we're in your corner. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, he, the meetings didn't go that well. For Zelensky, you remember he didn't get a joint press conference with uh, Joe Biden either. Right. That said, the United States, you know, through mouthpieces like Jake Sullivan and, and some members of Congress, continued to insist that we're not backing off. And Biden crossed two red lines. Not only did uh, he uh, agree to provide some attackums and you know these air, air tactical um, missiles. That are that had the potential to travel 190 miles. That's something that Biden in the past said was a red line. The reason they didn't want to provide him in the past, they feared it risked expanding the war and that Russia would retaliate and attack the United States. So that's why they didn't do it in the past. Now they're going to do it, which means they're taking a greater risk. Remember, the second thing uh, that came out of that is uh, Biden offered to provide an inspector general now. Uh, well, something the Congress it. wasn't even allowed to vote on when Rand Paul right. and Thomas Massey proposed. Right. It. Yeah. So th they reversed that in order to, I think, buy uh, some support from Republicans in order to uh, continue funding this war. But uh, Zelensky did not get the the public uh, adulation that he had received in the past, right. where he was he got to get kissed by Nancy Pelosi, which I you know that may be a human rights violation in my book. <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, you know, didn't get the joint uh, session of Congress right. either, right? And right. and and the criticism, the relations with Poland, they, they they've gotten even rockier since he was here. Yeah, I, I understand that the president of Poland is the titular head of state. It wasn't the prime minister. I understand that there are Polish elections on October fifteenth, and the Polish farmers are up in arms about Ukrainian uh, grain. And this may have been said for Polish domestic political consumption. But it was a pretty lurid analogy. Oh, yeah. And he oh, gave yeah. it right outside the UN, either minutes before or minutes after Zelensky was giving this internationally televised address. No, absolutely. And in fact, when Zelensky going back to Ukraine, he stopped off in Poland to give uh, some, uh, you know, pin some medals on some Polish volunteers. Not a single senior Polish uh, po politician and government figure would meet with him, would be seen in public with him. And so that's what I'm saying. It's th th That wasn't a one-off with Duda. That wasn't just a, a right. staged uh, event at the UN, you know, at one time, and then, you know, they're going to go back to business as normal. There's a, there's a real rift that's now developed between Poland and Ukraine, and that's going to have some significant implications for the ability of the United States to continue to arm Ukraine going forward.
We're, we're going to take a break in a minute, but one last question about Poland. Is the 101st Airborne still there? Are there still 40,000 American troops training with 90,000 Polish troops at the Polish-Ukraine border? Or uh, are the Americans back in Germany? I, I don't know if the 101st is or the 82nd, but the, the 101st and 82nd are deployed in Poland and Romania. And I think that the total troop count on that, I think, is, is closer to 20,000, not 40,000. But it's still, you've got U.S. You have U.S. troops present, and then we can talk later about the reports that a German actual Bundeswehr uh, four guys were killed in a tank inside Ukraine. 